You guys do it. Standing here with three legends, there, there goes one of them. <laughs> I was yeah, going to say, it's his story. <laughs> hey, hey, hey. Sorry. Pat Burns, the Slayer, and frickin' Mr. Electric, the biggest legend of them all, huh? Yeah. All right, so what did you tell me about this buck first? This, this right shows? here, is this is what started the entire story. So I found these in 2016 with my son, and this was on his 2015 head. So, so pe of, people are thinking, how could he be 11 years old? How could he they get a lot of comments of that? There's no way he could be 11 and still that big. How old is he here? So this is in 2015. You hold that up. like That's, that's got to be at least a four and a half year old. I mean, heavy junk. I mean, I haven't seen too many three, four year olds that develop. They don't that get junk until we get junk. five and a half. Yeah, until they start getting older. Yeah, if he was four and a half there, then he'd be ten and a half now. If he was five and a half there, he'd be eleven and a half now. Yeah, but, so. th but this is the start of it. So this is where it all started. I found these, and I was on a mission to try to get them. And th that was literally September of 2016. And it took until November 4th, 2020. So where's your next shed progression from that? Uh, this one right here. This was on his either... I didn't find anything in 2016. This was in... The, early 2018 so this was on his 2017 head and i got a picture of him that year two one years picture. older than that one yep. yep and i got one picture of him of this side going by in the trail cam picture this is kind of blurry when it goes by so it literally just looks like electricity that's, that's the that's one that where you name him yeah yep. yep. just because this one because it I was just like what the fuck is so that? the other one looked like that too and that's why most people say is the prime of the bucks life kind of the best antler six or seven right the, you know five yep. six seven but if you look at that compared to him now, he he's he's much bigger now at 11, and he's more more mass and junky. He probably would have scored better here yeah. just because of the the length of stuff. But yeah, but I mean, I mean more mass, bigger brow time there. These two these two are pretty similar. Who knows? I mean, it's pretty. Yeah, there's that. And then what do we got after that? So, so that's then, 2018. So, so the, his, the rack that was on his head in 2018, uh, another guy found him in a ditch on a road because he went to hop over a dirt road. And yep. this guy driving found him. So he's got those. He's supposed to give them to me. John, send them. <laughs> um, so that's 2019? Yeah, 20. this, is, this, is, uh, this, is, this was on his 2019 head. This was probably his weakest year. So let's see what that's like compared to that. Yeah, he has less less point, broken times. Yeah, this shorter, this was this points. was broken off in velvet. So he so that would be what his eight uh, nine and a half year old year. Yeah, he he regressed a tiny bit. A, a little bit, yeah. yeah but if so you look, here's something crazy. If you look at this one, look at this one, and look at this one. What do you see for blemishes on there from him fighting or anything? Where? What do you mean? Nothing. There's yeah. there's. So I don't think he fought much at all. I think that's why he probably lived so long. Because he, he wasn't. Well, maybe th maybe this year he did because he had some broken times. Well, no, that that broke off in velvet. Oh, okay. Right. And then this is this is last year's sheds. And now that's his maybe his best year at ten and a half. Well now the year before, the ones that we don't have here yep. are, are better than this okay. for sure. They're they're a little bit more I mean very equivalent, but they're 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 beastly too. But this is this is his probably ten or eleven right here. Jesus Christ. <laughs> uh, I think he could go older. Like who knows how yeah, old it's, it's like, he is? looks like a damn dinosaur. We're going to find out. We're yeah. going to send the teeth in, send and we're going to we're gonna know after that. And then, uh, here he is today. Here he is. Man. Yeah, he got the big Roman nose. He's got such a great cape. Yeah, a little bit of tick damage, they said, but we'll see. Fucking swamp donkey. Yeah, he's, he, is, he is for sure, man. He is for sure. My God. So, yeah. so just tell people real quick about like the quick progression on how you went from finding those sheds in 2015, and what did that do to you? It got you obsessed with the steer, right? Yeah, but I mean, I think I think that these pushed me into becoming a serious hunter because you know before that you weren't as serious. I mean, I, yeah, I hunted, but you know, like everybody. But you didn't have the obsess that crazy obsession. Where you don't, every day you don't you have know. something that that when you show somebody those sheds the first time, they're like. What the hell is that? No way, that's that's not around here. So from that, that sparks your curiosity and, and gets that juice flowing about it, and then you start exploring more. So like I said, I put cameras out. I didn't get a picture of him that year, the next year. It took two years to get a picture of him, which was these these sheds here. So this you were just year. in the and spot. And I only got no pictures in 2016. One picture the whole year of 2017. Wow. And so I didn't even know it was him until shed season. You hadn't found his core yet. No, not at and all. Yeah, it was it's way up. Super small core. It's right? a huge. I mean, it's big wood. So, yeah. 
from where I found the sheds, I could go multiple directions. Only one direction is going to lead me closer to his core. Yeah. And obviously, from that center point, I went in every direction because that was my original center, you know? Um, hindsight's twenty twenty. Where I got them now, it makes sense where those were because that's, you know, maybe a mile and a half, two miles from his his central core. But, yeah, it's just... Just not so. Yeah, just kept how adjusting. Big, how adjusting. big was his core? It was, it was tiny, right? He stayed in this real I, small. I think yeah, where I killed him and where he's comfortable in daylight, I would say is three three hundred yard three hundred uh, three hundred yard radius maybe. Yeah, three to five. I don't know. It's, it's hard to really tell, but from the intel that I got this year, and I literally and, and here's a crazy thing too that makes it weird to me is that we always hear that how much bucks change over the season how much they move from here to there and, and you know once once the leaves fall they take off and go somewhere else and i think that that's true for the most part but what i learned with him from all this research is that where his sheds were is where he was comfortable in daylight now where i had pictures of him early on in velvet so his bed was he felt so comfortable there and bulletproof he was there all year yeah but i think that he chose to go in different directions from that center point based on food and pressure and stuff like that but i think that he stayed in the the same relative kind of bedding area he just chose different sides of the knoll to sit on depending on what time of the year it was but i don't know it's it's, it's weird i mean he, he literally was in there in early velvet i got all kinds of early velvet pictures of him all the way through his full growth and that's where his sheds were so it's it's pretty crazy it's pretty crazy I look at the himself. size of his neck there and uh like you said, it's interesting. He doesn't have broken tines, so he wasn't much of a fighter. Yeah, I don't think know? he had to, right? He yeah. was gonna fight him. Yeah, that's true. He probably just dominated that whole area. No other. He probably didn't have to, to you know. He just, you know. They've yeah. got some other nice bucks on camera there, but uh, they don't even compare closely to this one. Yeah. So it's crazy. It's bittersweet, though, man. It's yeah. So I was gonna say, how does it feel? Because you had a relationship with him for five yeah. years and barely ever saw him. <laughs> so, I never saw him. I saw him maybe once last year, and I'm still not 100 percent sure. So how did that feel when he first came and he said he was a majestic coming through? Right? Yeah, it was nuts. It was one of those like things where it's like almost dreamlike, you know. And then you make that decision where it's like you just I just had to end it, you know. And I I just made sure I made sure it was like a an as ethical of a shot as I possibly could, you know. From, from what he gave me. What was, was the shot? Where did you shoot? 20 him? yards, like literally right in his heart. So right through the front chest? Yeah. Oh, and and then it came, out, it came out back here. So it literally got went through his entire body, but it, it hit heart, both lungs, a little bit of liver, no guts. So it, it was like, and he probably went 20 yards. You saw him crash? I didn't see him. The problem was it was so thick there. It's full of mountain laurel. Yeah. That once he turned and ran, all I saw was bushes shake and shake and shake and it stopped. And so I didn't know if I totally whiffed and... He just was stopped 20 yards away waiting, or if I, you know, drilled him, which, you know, once I got my composure and didn't fall out of the tree and got down and checked the arrow, I, I knew that he was done because it was just... Did you get the shakes? Uh, a little bit, but not as much as I thought I was going to. I think that, I mean, it was, it was, it's emotional, you know, when you get, when you get up to him, especially, you're like, it's just, it just seems unreal, you know? Um, you had how many miles on it? How many cameras? How many batteries, you said? Dude. Too many. Like went right, through ten thousand plus I, batteries. I count. Yeah, I just counted all the cameras. They had like a hundred cameras, and then I counted that by the amount of years I chased them, and just kind of hundred cameras. <sighs> yeah, it's psychotic. We had, Evan was filming. Was asking uh, how much money you think he spent on this buck over the years. If you add up all the cameras, you add up all the yeah, batteries. Too, you too add much. Yeah, there. Ten thousand yeah. plus dollars. The boots sure. wore out. Probably. Yeah, yeah. Boots probably, wore out. Probably, but I mean, it, it's a good addiction, right? Like, yeah, it's like. Oh yeah. You know, some people spend that much at a bar in a year. Some people spend that much on uh, 100%. all kinds of negative shit. Drug habit, yeah. Instead, it's, yeah, exactly. Keeps, Instead for me, you, keeps you fit. Keeps me, yeah, keeps me in shape. I'm almost new. Keeps your brain life. good. <laughs> <laughs> now you're famous. Good. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. No legend. Dude, you, you were so dedicated on this buck, man. I'm just, I'm so just glad it ended like this because I, I have a lot of friends that, that are, you know, I, I look up to that are better hunters than me in my mind and, and they they had the same type of journeys it just didn't end the same way so there's no matter how hard and how good you are there's always a component of luck there's some fate involved so it just comes down to determination and you just you just can't take no for an answer and it, i mean shit can change at the drop of a dime you, you know your target can get hit by a car or someone else can you they smack it with a shotgun who knows but it just it just happened to be in the cards for me i think that the universe worked out. You know, you gotta stack the deck in your favor, and I did everything I possibly could to stack the deck in my favor. 
and now I'm lost. I don't know what to do with my life. <laughs> well, so last year when we did the podcast, you said, uh, you said, I'm almost ready for him just to get hit by a car. I'd be happy. I was just or, ready or for find, to... find his body dead, and it closes the chapter. Yeah, I just wanted because to be it was over. driving you nuts. Yeah, I just wanted it to be over in some way or another. I mean, I really didn't want somebody else to get him and get the the attention for it. Because I, I guess I guess I would have been jealous because the yeah. amount of time I put in. So it's almost like you know somebody that would... swooped in and stole it last minute. Yeah, yeah. yeah like someone that. steals, you know, it's stolen valor. Right? You know, it's yeah. like you know, but uh, no, man. I, I mean, I, I did put in a ton of work and. I, you know, paid off at the end of the day. Dude, so I'm so happy for you, man. Thank you, brother. Congratulations. Appreciate you, bro. And um, I know there's gonna be another one out there you're gonna get obsessed with. Uh, no, I'm, I'm taking <laughs> I'm taking it easy now, man. I'm, I'm gonna look for sure. I'm not gonna like turn my face, but I'll, I will never put the amount of dedication that I put into him into any other deer. Really? Ever again. That was my que- that was my question for you. No, nope, never, never again. Will Will I find a monster? Maybe that's equivalent to him on ca- trail cam. Trail camera, will I hunt them? Will I maybe get them? Yep. But am I putting in the same amount of effort and putting the same desire in? Never. Why? Because a little bit of exhausting, a little draining? Super. You thought Super. about them every single day, right? Super. For Super. It's, it's draining on everything. It's draining on your family. It's draining on, you know, you choose that over work. It, it's an addiction at the end of the day. So yeah. although it's a healthy addiction in some ways, it still takes away from That's true. life, you know? And, mm-hmm. and uh, not to say that I don't want to, you know, get another beast and i'm not going to try but i'm, I'm not going to do what i did with him because it was too much it was a, it was an awesome experience but yeah. i already did it you know yeah i mean and there's half will, will i will i ever be able to do that again will i ever be able to, that would that's I don't tough know, to live up to man. i don't know too many people that have ever done it in this yeah. capacity where you like have that much history i mean the amount of trail cam pictures and videos and shit that i have is insane like i have pictures for years just multiple and, and it's cool. And another thing that's cool about this situation is I met a lot of people along the way that had small pieces of information that helped with the puzzle, whether they knew they helped me or not. You know, I would take any bit of piece of information. Somebody told me, hey, this guy, this guy's got a picture up over here of that buck. You know, I'd, I'd contact that person, kind of chat with them, and learn a little bit more about, you know, I'd share them a little bit of my information. They didn't know my wealth of knowledge. I'd give them a little bit. Yeah. They'd give me all, all that they knew pretty much. And then that was a bigger, it was more valuable to me than to them, you know? Yeah. I'd throw them a couple of nuggets that didn't mean shit to me. But, you know, they threw me a little bit. And I'm like, holy shit, he's all the way over there. All right, then. Now that, you know, from where I'm checking them out to where they are, now I'm like, all right, so this is the area I need to check. So just small pieces of the puzzle that, that you get from all different angles, I think, help along the journey and... Every 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 tiny grain of information is part of the puzzle, and you you can't neglect any of it because you just can't. It'll be. Now you were a scientist on this one, man, detective, and uh, we're getting so happy for you. Thank you, bro. It's one of the best stories ever. I mean, I can't think of a better hunting story. These amount of sheds, I mean, the amount of time you put into it and to finally get it done. It's. I mean, this is probably the best hunting story that I've ever I've ever heard of. That. I mean, this. This is it. Coming from, this coming is the from top, you, bro, the top of the crazy. accomplishments right here, man. I know. Coming from you, that's crazy. You, you got some stories day. like that, Neil? Like, yes. I know. said that to him the other day. He sent me that same text. He said that, and I was like, bro, yeah, I get it, but fuck, man. Like, look at I you, mean, dude. Tell, find, one person, find me a story that has this amount of sheds of a caliber of this buck who put this much time and effort in this many hours. It, I've in, never heard of such a thing. In New England in big woods. Right. And you got it at the end of the day. Yeah. That, that's yeah. just unbelievable. Well, there's, there's still luck there, though. I mean, don't. Yeah. There's still luck, but the, the the day was crazy. It was one of those weird days. I got in the stand early. Um, I, I, once I got my picture transferred, like 6:30, I checked. It's like, oh, he was in here 4:45 a.m. Holy shit, he's probably close, you know. Sat there for a while. I hear some shit going on. Buck is doe chasing up in the thick shit over there. I'm waiting, hoping something happens. Nothing. Around nine o'clock, a little spike comes in. Uh, actually, before that, a doe blew up on the hill. I'm hearing her. I'm like, fuck, I'm screwed, you know, like. I'm, I'm just rethinking everything as I'm sitting there because I'm like, all right, my wind's perfect, but now the thermals are taking it up the hill to where that doe just blew, so maybe maybe I'm wrong. You know, Maybe this isn't the place I should really be hunting them, you know? And then you know, I get a, I get a text message at like 11. That I gotta yeah, go that's get a crazy my, part of the story. I, yeah, I got to go get my daughters, you know? And I'm like, there's literally, I just had a spike right under me. I'm hearing <laughs> buck and doe running through the thick shit. I got a picture of him behind me a few hours before. And I'm like, I gotta go get my daughter. So I family first at the end of the day. Yeah. Go pick up my kids, take them out to pizza. I'm literally eating in a pizza shop <laughs> with my thermals on, a pair of shorts, knee high socks. like a goofball, knee high socks. <laughs> uh, you know, I leave there smelling like, you know, pizza sauce and yep. 
grease, you know? Maybe so, that's it. He was a pizza guy all along. He, he, he might have back been. in there and he was he like... He might have been. I, I literally hoofed it out of there so I knew I was sweating. I hoofed it back in once I, you know, had lunch with the girls and dropped them off. And uh, I get in the stand and it says it's a south wind and I'm like... What time did you get back in there? Uh, uh, I left my truck about 2.30. Oh, so wow, yeah. I got in there about 3... Pushing it tight. 3.45. Five ish, three thirty. Oh, you killed him like a half hour later. Yeah, no, a little bit more, but but <laughs> even even going in, you know. So I'm checking the wind and I'm like south wind and I'm looking at where my stand is and I'm like, eh, it's kind of blowing to where all the activity was earlier, but screw it, you know. Like what? I mean, the the way the activity was going, I'm like that buck that's chasing the doe is doesn't give a crap about anything because I'm just hearing them go everywhere and he, his mind's occupied, you know. And, and mind you, at the exact same time right now, my dog's in heat and I'm seeing like our <laughs> other dog like chase it everywhere and even if you you know you stop it however many times you tell it to stop you could kick it in the head it doesn't matter he still goes after it so i'm like just that's in the back of my mind too and i'm like they're not gonna give a shit that buck's just gonna chase that door wherever and uh i'm texting a couple of my buddies and i'm like because once i got there the south wind actually wasn't south now it's blowing east and literally where i'm sitting east is where i know he's all the my cell cameras over here i'm getting pictures of him in daytime like that's where he's betting i'm like i'm screwed it's a wrap i'm literally texting them like yeah whatever it's like south wind my ass it's east it's like i'm screwed he's not gonna come anyway it doesn't matter but it's too late now I'll just sit here maybe i'll get lucky you know next thing you know that i mean that's the incredible part of the story then because all that scientific work all Didn't the detective sh- stuff you went in on the worst day the worst came, possible win and, and here he comes yeah yeah so so and you said you said you had to be aggressive you just gotta be there sometimes you, you, you just do. gotta be there yeah yep. you just gotta have to be putting in time in the stand and it's a winner yeah, that's it, man. That's it. But I know we went over uh, what we were expecting to do, but November fourth, you, you got him. Right? What's it, special about that? November fourth is an you awesome. Killed a lot of big bucks. Yeah, that's that's a that's a date that I killed. Probably my first big, well, one of my first big good ones during archery season as well. And uh, it, it was good. You know, I, I love that first week in my area. The first week seems to be a really a really good week. I think the doe groups happen. A couple of the doe groups go into estrus early there, so. That's it, man. Sweet. A little bit of luck. Yep. A little bit of hard work. That's it, man. Awesome. That's good. Pat Burns, the electric buck, potentially a state record. Who knows? We'll find out. Still TV. Probably not. It doesn't matter. TV it's a record to me, morning. man. It's a record to you. It's a record to me. The record of your life and his. That's it. Yep. Right there. Great, man. Appreciate hit, it. Hit subscribe on YouTube, and uh, I'm looking forward to seeing what else you kill this year if you get anything, Pat. We'll see. I'm going to kill some time. <laughs>